Hello everyone, today we're talking about Evangelii Gaudium Sunday, formerly known as Home Mission Sunday. It's going to be celebrated on the 18th of September 2022. And I'm joined by Father Jan Novotnik, our Director of Mission here at the Bishop's Conference. And I think the first question is rather an obvious one. <laughs> Used to be known as Home Mission Sunday, now Evangelii Gaudium Sunday. Some people might not know the significance of Evangelii Gaudium and why we've called this day Evangelii Gaudium Sunday. So tell us. Okay, James. Um, well, to answer your first question, Evangelii Gaudium is the title of uh, Pope Francis's first apostolic exhortation um, in 2013 when he became Pope. And uh, he spoke then uh, about the joy of the gospel. So Evangelii Gaudium is uh, the Latin for the joy of the gospel. And in that uh, document, he was really inviting the Catholic Church uh, to be joyous in proclaiming the faith, um, trying to seek new ways of understanding the faith, and, and reaching out to others. And so I think um, in our Evangelii Gaudium Sunday for the 18th of September, what we're trying to do is to help people understand uh, what we do here at the Bishops' Conference Secretariat to support our bishops um, in three areas of their work. So what are those three areas? Uh, so the three areas of work, we'll start with the first, which um, is evangelization and discipleship, which encompasses all the work that the bishops want to do in those areas, particularly, I'd say, of supporting our evangelization and catechesis coordinators in the 22 dioceses of England and Wales. So the work here at the Secretariat is not to tell people top down what to do, but to support that work and to be a conduit um, where information can be gathered and people can um, give and receive information and share good practice about what is going on across the dioceses of England and Wales to bring people to faith and, and to form them in faith. And I think central to that at the moment is the work that we're doing um, with the bishops um, to institute the ministries of catechist, lector and acolyte, um, which following from Pope Francis's um, desire um, that we formally institute um, catechists for the church and uh, admit uh, more lay people into the ministry of reader and uh, acolyte. So that is the main focus of the work that we're doing at the moment for evangelization and catechesis. Just quickly, some people might not know what an acolyte is. Um, an acolyte, I suppose the, the best way of saying, well, acolyte means to be the candle bearer, which you'd think, gosh, why are we training people to carry candles? But realistically, if you think in your parish of the extraordinary uh, minister of Holy Communion, uh, those lay people who assist uh, in distributing Holy Communion, uh, but also in visiting the sick um, and in um, having an outreach in the parish. So I think the Holy Father wants to, to say that this is an important ministry in the church and it's now open. It used to just be for those on their way to priesthood. Um, so as seminarians, those trained to be priests would be instituted as readers and acolytes. Uh, but Pope Francis has said that, that everyone should be able to do these, um, female and male alike. Um, and the hope would be that we will gradually begin to introduce these into the life of the church in England and Wales. Now, I think most people can get along with what was Home Mission Sunday, now Evangelii Gaudium Sunday, being having evangelization at its core, how we reach out, how we spread the beauty of our faith. But sharing the beauty of our faith, we can expand on that a bit, can't we? Because with Evangelii Gaudium Sunday, we're talking about the beauty of the liturgy. We're talking about the beauty of our churches and the patrimony therein. Tell us a bit about that. Yes, yeah, so the, the mission department encompasses the first aspect we've spoken about, evangelization and discipleship. But it also, as you say, James, looks at how uh, we support the work of the bishops, guided by them um, for the work on the liturgy and patrimony. And I think there are two areas there, really. Um, one, making sure that we respond to Rome's requests about liturgical texts, making sure that we have proper translations in English, which are then approved by Rome, but also offering opportunities for liturgical formation, again, across the Diocese of England and Wales. But also within that, not just looking about what goes on in the church building, which of course is essential and very, very important, and the heart of what we do as Catholics when we gather Sunday by Sunday uh, for the Eucharist, but also 
the beauty of the buildings. The buildings that we have um, need to be cared for and looked after. And people might not um, know this, um, why would they? Um, that we have dedicated people here who work within the Secretariat, who support, again, bishops in their diocese, um, to look after historic churches, listed buildings, uh, to gain funding so that they can be repaired and looked after, so they can be truly beautiful places so that when we enter them, uh, we're caught up in that mystery of the beauty uh, of God. Uh, so that's really, really important work, and it goes on in a very quiet way, in a very subtle way, um, but as we know, and we've published this, you know, has produced millions of pounds in funding for our churches, so, which we're very grateful for. So it's very important work. So far, the end, there's that third component as well. We're speaking to one another in yeah. dialogue and Dialogue's the word, isn't it, for that third component? Indeed. Uh, dialogue and unity, I think, are the two things that uh, I would stress. And um, again, perhaps not always fully appreciated. You know, um, when I was in the parish, um, I can remember, you know, um, we would have our ecumenical walks of witness. Um, we would engage with uh, Christian ministers from the other churches. People may be surprised to know um, that we actually do that at a national level as well. So part of the work that we do in the, in the mission team um, is to, to work with members of other Christian denominations and those members of other faiths. In fact, the other half of my title is to be the National Ecumenical Officer. So I work directly with the bishops um, to support them in the work that they do. So for example, I find myself at the, the General Synod of the Church of England, um, representing the bishops of England and Wales. And I also represent them on lots of ecumenical bodies. Um, just the other day, members of the mission team uh, were supporting one of our bishops uh, visiting a mosque and uh, creating better and deeper relationships with our Muslim brothers and sisters. Uh, we also work with uh, the Jewish community, with Sikhs, with Buddhists. So there's a lot of outreach um, which perhaps doesn't directly always impinge on the life of a diocese, but it's really important work because certainly when we think about ecumenism, uh, Jesus in the Gospel, um, in you know, John chapter 17, prayed that the church, that we would all be one. And so this is the work of Christ that we're doing and supporting, and also supporting the ecumenical coordinators from the different dioceses across the country, again in their work, directly supporting their diocesan bishop and encouraging that work um, nationwide. So very, very important. And you talk about those other Christian confessions and also those other religions. And of course, there's, you know, Hinduism, Zoroastrianism, exactly, exactly. Jainism, loads more. But also there's a, an outreach to those of no faith, isn't there? Absolutely, because I think uh, going back to Evangelii Gaudium and even going back uh, a long, long way to, to Paul VI in 1964, um, in a really important document, well, I think so anyway, um, another um, Latin word, Ecclesiam Suam, um, on the nature of the church. Paul VI, Pope Paul VI, talked about, you know, that we have a dialogue, uh, obviously with ourselves in the, in the Catholic Church, with other Christians, um, with those of the other faiths, and then those who are seeking God, uh, people of goodwill. In Eucharistic Prayer 4, um, there's that lovely phrase about, and those who seek you with a sincere heart. So we are trying always to find ways to engage with our world. And again, that probably leads us into that vision of, of patrimony and the beauty of our churches. And if our doors are open and people walk into a church, perhaps the first thing that they do will be marvel that there is something special about this place. And they might just want to enter into a dialogue. So we support that work as best we can. Well, very important work, no Indeed. doubt. Now, it's the second collection day. And we're just emerging from a pandemic and it's pretty hard times for people Absolutely. out there as well, of course. Um, so I guess the second collection is to just encourage a bit of support, financial if possible, but certainly through prayer and, and any support that can be given for those aspects of work you've talked about, that very broad gamut of, of work. Is that what the second collection is all about? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I've been a parish priest and I know um, sometimes when people say there's a second collection, there's a sort of a collective groan. And I know at the moment that um, things are not easy for people, you know, providing for our families, putting fuel in our cars, getting food on our table. These are really difficult moments for all of us. 
And uh, I know that um, some people may not feel that they can give anything at the moment, and that's fine actually. Um, the first thing is to pray for this work, um, to pray for the work that we're doing, to pray for our bishops um, in their outreach in all of these areas and their ministry, which we here at the Secretariat try to support as best we can. And if you can give something to the second collection, please do and, and be assured that that money that you give, um, however big or small that donation may be, um, comes directly to support the work. Um, it doesn't get lost in the ether. Um, in the world of um, finance, I think you could talk about being ring-fenced. That money goes into a specific pot, which is for mission and, and Evangeli Gaudium work. And we will use the money that you so generously give to us uh, to support those of us who work within the Bishops' Conference um, and the diocese and the bishops. Father Ian, thank you very much. Thank you, James.